Article 18, shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $414,616 for the purpose of employing four additional full-time firefighter EMTs for the Hampton Fire Department over and above those positions funded by the 2019 operating budget and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, contract for, accept and expend federal homeland security safer funding estimated to equal $276,405 to be applied against said appropriation. The cost in year two is estimated to be $390,062 with federal funding estimated to be $290,446 and in year three the total cost is $397,622 with federal funding estimated to be $138,187. Federal SAFER grants pay for salary and benefits. This article shall be null and void if the federal funding is not approved or received. Majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5-0. Not recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 2-4-2. Fiscal Impact Note Finance Department, the estimated 2000. 19 tax impact on $138,211 is 4.1 cent per thousand dollars of valuation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 18? Moved by Mr. Bridal is a second, second by Ms. Woolsey. Ms. Woolsey, would you like to be heard on Article 18? This selectman's article will result in an increase from nine to ten first responders per shift. Permanently, this will mean enhanced protection for the public and safer working conditions for our firefighters. For those of you at the beach, especially in the summer season, the upgraded staffing should result in two working ambulances throughout the summer and a firefighter manning the walk-in first aid station. This increase is long overdue. After over 12 years of ramped up development, this isn't the quaint little community it used to be. Short staffing in the Hampton Fire Department is unacceptable. The good old days where all the firefighters lived in town and the call firefighters lived primarily at the beach are gone. Now the radius for attracting new hires is a good 30 miles. That's quite a commute. I recall incidents on Route 101 heading for the beach when drivers would lose control of their vehicles skid down the embankment, and end up in the water and under the bridge. I personally witnessed some of those crashes. In those days, almost all of our call firefighters lived at the beach, and they would respond to the scene with their own personal watercraft to effect the rescues. Our brave men and women of the Hampton Fire Department routinely risk their lives, their personal safety, as they respond to working fires, medical emergencies, accidents, drownings, mutual aid to sister communities, all the while risking poisoning from airborne hazardous substances which contaminate their garments, their skin, their lungs, and their eyes. As a community, it's time to upgrade our shifts to 10 responders year round. We will do our best as a board to seek out grant funds to help offset the salaries in the next years, but the four positions are critical to this department with or without grants. We will look forward to enhanced revenues from impact fees, impact fees to support all of our departments. And I want to uh, mention to you, as you go by the Uptown Fire Station occasionally, you might want to stop in 
and look in the vestibule at the tribute that is in there to uh, former firefighter Kyle Jamison, who did indeed pass away from cancer a couple of years back. We need your help with this vote. We need your help with permanent shift increase for firefighters per shift. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Woolsey. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Chief Ayotte. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Jameson Ayotte, your fire chief. And I serve at your, uh, I'm very privileged to serve as your fire chief. Thank you very much for that. I'd like to say that Hampton is a vibrant and growing community. Homes, condos, and businesses are continuing to develop. We're excited to see this growth, but keep a watchful eye on the pace that far exceeds the growth of the services that support it. Hampton Fire Rescue protects approximately $3.6 billion worth of property in town. This amount changes with the fluctuations in the market. Firefighters do not concern themselves with the assessed values. They will respond and give their very best to extinguish fires, regardless if the property value is $100,000 or $1 million. We're very concerned with the size of the buildings. Rise and fall in the market value can change daily. The volume is fixed and endures. Firefighting in larger structures requires more people to perform the tasks needed to extinguish the fires. New buildings take many forms. Since 2005, 15 new roads have been installed. 102 new housing units have been erected on these roads. Many seasonal uh, hotels and motels have been demolished and replaced with multi-story apartments and condominium units. Many of these are year-round residences. Some um, commercial and ho hotels and elder care residences have also added to the burden which, which we must respond. Since 2012, Hampton has added 1.4 million square feet of real estate. This, is, this all must be protected, and we have talked about um, the new fire codes and how they better protect the buildings that are being erected right now, but as you will know, uh, fire departments by state law do not have purview on one or two, sto uh, one or two family structures, only on commercial structures. Um, with firefighting in these structures requires personnel to accomplish this goal, and bringing firefighting
or does it have to come this year to save for grant? So the procedural question uh, for the board or for the for the manager is if Article 18 is approved, is it put aside or will um, there be contemporaneous knowledge about whether the safer grant has been secured or not? Mr. Moderator, uh, in normal municipal financing, uh, the grant will have to be approved before these funds are approved by the Department of Revenue Administration. If they are not at the time the tax rate is set, this, this article will be probably null and void. Okay, thank you. All right. I uh, like to propose a motion on this. An amendment? Yes. Amendment. Okay, why don't you read the amendment and then I'll take it from you and we'll see if you get a second. Uh, this article shall be null and void on December 31st, 2019 if the federal funding is not approved for or received by the town of Hampton. Majority vote required. So are you seeking to put that at the end of article? Right, right at the last sentence. Okay. Is there any, uh, so you're putting a date on, mm -hmm. um, right. a, an expiration date on this article of, what was it, December 31, 2019? Yes. Okay. Is there a second for Mr. Zanoy's uh, amendment? Second. I need to see, I, uh, Mr. Jones has seconded Mr. Zanoy's um, amendment. Would you like to speak to your amendment, Mr. Zanoy? Well, no, I think it's self-explanatory. I, 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 you know, I think that if, if let me the, take if, this from you. Excuse if me. this, if this article passes, I'd like to know that, you know, we're going to disposition these funds uh, expeditiously and not hold them out for a year or two or three or four, waiting for the safer grant that may be coming. We heard it's coming. We hear it, but we haven't been approved for it, or we haven't received it. Uh, I thought we'd put some some confines around this article. Uh, and not escrow uh, taxpayer money. Okay, so if anyone else wishing to be heard on the Zanoy Amendment, which uh, inserts December 31, 2019 as a expiration date, Mr. Welch. Mr. Moderator, um, in accordance with RSA 32 colon 7, Romans 7, this article dies on December 31st if in fact it's not implemented because there is no extension in the article to take it beyond that date. So on one hand, you could say it's not necessary. On the other hand, you could say it doesn't conflict with state law. Conflict. Okay. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Bridal. I'm going to ask you to step aside. Uh, Mr. Zanoy, we're... Well, I, I wanted to make a comment on No, you were, we're on to um, other folks on your amendment. Yes, I, don't, I just don't know how this affects the, the intent of the, amend, the Warren article. I would be uh, I would concerned. You know, we've had a government shutdown and that's affected stuff that's going on with the government, and we've got government grants here. And there could be another one coming up that we don't, have no clue on. So I think the way it was written before was fair and adequate, and uh, I think we, that we should stay with that. Thank you. All right, Ms. Bridal. Anyone else wishing to be heard on the amendment? Just the amendment? Yes. Mr. Jones. If I heard the town manager correctly, this is going to expire on December 31st anyway. So the amendment simply makes explicit that which is implicit. So what's the problem here? Just vote yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else wishing to be heard on the amendment? The Zanoy amendment to amend the article by inserting a express expiration date of December 31, 2019. Seeing none, let's have a vote on the Zanoy amendment. If you are in favor of the Zanoy amendment, you'll vote yes. And um, if it passes, those yellow uh, edits will be included. If you're opposed, uh, the December 31, 2019 date will not be inserted. So all those in favor of the Zanoy Amendment, please raise your voter card. Down cards, all opposed. I declare the Zanoy Amendment has failed, and we're back to the Article 18 as originally printed. Is anyone wishing to be heard on Article 18 as it appears originally? Good morning, John Kane, 115 Ocean Boulevard, Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. I ask you to please uh, vote on Article 18 for the four additional fire uh, fighters down the beach, which will hopefully bring down the ambulance. Uh, during the summertime, I have been down there um, 
I'll give you one example, seafood festival, not seafood festival, sandcastles, when it's about 95 degrees, and there are people <laughs> dropping left and right. We had our ambulance on the run, we had Seabrook on the run, we had Hampton Falls coming in on the run. There is definitely a need for ambulance down the beach. Uh, personally speaking, I had three interactions this year with the um, firefighters um, down at the beach. Two of them resulted in me taking a ride up to Portsmouth. Uh, the third, they actually stopped at the house, came in with EKGs, and looked at the heart, took the pressure, and done amazing things so I didn't have to go there. But as I look out here, and I know what's going on in the world, we've got an aging population, and sooner you're gonna have some heart problems, back problems, cancer problems, unfortunately, and you never know when that's gonna hit you. And the, having the Hampton uh, firefighters there uh, coming down and making the call. Uh, currently, we're lucky to have um, EMS or something on the um, paramedic uh, on the three-man crew, and he can come down. But, you know, if you're having a heart attack and you're going down fast, um, that second ambulance, is, uh, the ambulance uptown is great, but those five minutes might kill you. So please support the firefighters down here. We have a growing population also, so they're overwhelmed with what we've got. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kane. I'm going to go to uh, somebody who hasn't spoken on Article 18 before I get back to you, Mr. Zanoy. Uh, Mr. Carpentier, would you like to be heard? No, Jerry, you, you have to yield to the people who have not spoken on Article 18 yet. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, again, Jed Carpentier, uh, President of the Professional Firefighters of Hampton. I'd like to start by um, thanking the Board of Selectmen for their unanimous support of this article. Uh, I think that's a critical piece to this, and it shows the Board's forward thinking ability and the trust that they put in their department heads to lay out a solvent plan. Uh, this article, at the end of the day, is asking the people what level of service do you want from your fire department? It's really that simple, and that's the question that you need to um, ask yourself when you go into the booth. Our members are not just firefighters. They're not just paramedics. They're an all-hazards response crew. Whenever, uh, whenever there's an emergency, whatever your emergency might be, whether it be a fire, flood, medical aid, ocean rescue, or simply some of my favorites, when one of your loved ones or perhaps you just fell down and need assistance up in the middle of the night and we're, we're there to be able to provide whatever service that you need. Um, all of our members are cross-trained to operate every piece of apparatus that we have and do so on a consistent basis. The SAFER grant, our Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response grant, is designed to add more firefighters to allow crews to operate in the most efficient manner for the public in the safest manner possible for our members. Um, there has been consistent discussion around allocating some of our res uh, adjusting, sorry, around allocating some of our resources to the beach district to, due to the density of the high value targets down there. Our most valuable resource at the fire department is our people. This article will provide your fire department the resources to provide um, an escalation of services in the beach district um, with without compromising crew safety. In closing, we commend the outside the box thinking of the board to incorporate federal money to offset this uh, impact for the taxpayers for the increased service that they'll be receiving. Additionally, we support sustainable ways to use our own revenue generated from the services we provide to continually uh, reinvest in our most valuable resources, our people. At the end of the day, um, the voters know, and I hope you appreciate, the quality of work you get from your firefighters. These positions um, would provide more resources for us to provide you the highest level of care in the safest manner for our members. Thank you for your time and your support on this article. Thank you, Mr. Carpentier. Anyone who hasn't been heard, go ahead, sir. Good afternoon, Adam Mills, 14 Fairfield Drive, Hampton, New Hampshire. I'm also a firefighter paramedic with the Hampton Fire Department, proudly serving. Just want to uh, encourage you to get a, 
uh, vote yes on Article 17 and 18. Um, other towns throughout New Hampshire have used this uh, safer grant, uh, Hudson, um, Salem, and we're very much in need of personnel, like Jed Carpentier said. Without the personnel, we can't do our job properly. Um, thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bridal, on the um, on the motion. Yes, Rush Bridal, 225 Toll Farm Road. I, I've heard some comments here made today that we were trying to camouflage stuff. When this Board of Selectmen brought this up originally, we had two warrant articles. One was just, in fact, to put four men on and put it on the, uh, the taxpayers. The other one was this safer grant. And as we move forward in our deliberation with this board, we decided that, yes, in fact, we do need four firefighters, and we've needed them for a long time. But if we were able to get a grant to help the, the taxpayers to be able to get this, that's what we were going to do. So there wasn't any confusion with two Warren articles. We would have one, and we would support going after the SAFER grant. You know, last year, I think we had an average of 56 uh, mutual aid calls coming into Hampton. Going out, I think we had eight. So there's about, f even say 45. If even 30 of those were ambulance calls, that's potential revenue that this town had lost. Because yes, in fact, we do charge for our ambulance. And that's revenue that this town lost on a number of calls. Will it pay for the whole thing? No. Do we need it? Absolutely, yes. And I would encourage people, support this. If we can't get the grant, we're not going to get the firefighters. Then maybe next year we'll be back looking for the firefighters directly. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Mrs. Zanoy. Yeah, Jerry Zanoy, 16 Presidential Circle. Um, I voted no on this. Um, because at the end of three years, the fourth year, the town will bear the full brunt of four firefighters. That'll be almost a half a million bucks up. The operational budget will be up by with overtime and callbacks and fringe benefits. Be close to a half a million dollars. The operational budget will be up by that much. But in addition to that, I just wonder and to Brian's point about discussion on a lot of our calls, most of our calls, as I understand it, are ambulance calls. And I think back, I lived in Natick for 10 years with 30,000 people. And they, had a, they had a commercial ambulance uh, uh, outfit uh, servicing the town. It serviced the town very well. I'm just wondering, uh, from a cost-effectiveness point of view, if we did a study and uh, asked an ambulance service, a commercial one, to come in and subsidize itself in the town of Hampton. They would be buying the ambulances. They would be supplying the paramedics. And our guys wouldn't have to be out running ambulances rather than fighting fires, if you will. I think this needs discussion. It really does. I mean, we just can't keep spending money. We've got to think of other ways, I think. How do, we, how do we handle what we need to do with the money we have? We do it every day in our homes. It's not done municipally that way. I, it's really frustrating to me. Anyway, I voted this down. I had to vote no on this. I understand the fire department is a very good fire department. I have no problems with the quality level of it. I've used them a number of times myself. Broke my arm down at the beach. They came and you know, brought me to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. But it's not, the, it's not, the, it's not that that's in my mind. In my mind is, is this going to raise the operational budget by half a million dollars in, th in the fourth year after these grants have passed and long forgotten, if you will. Or are we really doing the right thing now? And maybe this master plan, maybe that'll help cause some of this conversation if, in fact, that passes. But I just wonder, are we as cost effective as we can be from this paramedic point of view and the ambulance point of view? Can we get serviced as quickly at, at a cheaper cost or a less expensive cost? Have we really investigated that? Have we analyzed that? Do, do, we, do we compare the costs? I don't think so. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Zanoy. Anyone else wishing to be heard, Mr. Carpentier? Again, Jed Carpentier, President of Professional Firefighters of Hampton. Um, just in uh, reply to Mr. Zanoy's comments about uh, the potential of a private ambulance, I would, uh, you know, we hear, we hear a conversation about local control. 
um, which is something that would be given up in that circumstance. I think the comment is somewhat inflammatory by nature, but I do acknowledge the fact that we could look at d additional sources of revenue. Are, are we allocating that in the best way? There's been conversations the boards had to have, made some tough decisions about what role the state plays in this. Maybe that's something that needs to be revisited. This federal grant is a way to offset that. Um, and again, the, the, the revenue generated from the ambulance service, are we applying the appropriate sustainable amount back into our most important resources, our people, something else to look at. So I think there's avenues to maybe address how we do things internally slightly different. Um, and I appreciate your support on this article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carpentier. Mr. Bryant. Yeah, I just gonna make a comment again about the, the private ambulance service. At, at 10 men on a shift, we are still not up to standard, national standards. That doesn't include doing the ambulance. If you have a private ambulance service in here, how many times does that fire department have to go out on that call? Because a private ambulance service doesn't do auto extrication, doesn't do a lot of stuff. They always need extra help. For the bang for your buck, you have the best, most highly qualified, highly respected ambulance service in this state right here in Hampton. You know, I, I look at Manchester. Now, Manchester is bigger than us. But in the summertime, they're about the same size. Manchester has 46, 47 people on at a time, 47 firefighters at a time. We have 10 if this goes through. Manchester doesn't do the ambulance service. So I just, I, I want to get that out there that, you know, even at 10 men, we are still not up to the national standard. But our fire department does the best they can with what they have. And will they respond? Yes, they will every time they can. But we need to make sure that they're safe and they have the correct manpower to do it. This does not give us the adequate manpower, but it does go a long way to helping. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Chief A. James Anaya, your fire chief. Thank you very much, sir. Um, one last closing argument that I would like to make for this safer grant is that these are your firefighters. They start every day as Hampton firefighters. This is not a private organization. They're not a profit-driven organization. As discussed a couple of times now, there is revenue generated by doing ambulance calls. These people do both. They do fire and EMS. There is no bigger bang for that buck. I can tell you that right now. If we do hire in a private company to assist in that world, we still need the firefighters to do fire suppression. Additionally, profit-driven companies have shown and demonstrated time and again that their bottom line is what they're worried about. I can absolutely tell you that every member of this fire department is worried about your safety. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Chief Ayotte. Um, Mr. Jones, and then we're gonna wrap up with Mr. Edgar and see where we end up. I just Jones. learned that we're not up to federal standards. But I know that we all agree that we have a great fire service, great ambulance service in our fire department, in spite of the fact that we're not up to federal standards, apparently. Apparently, we're better than the federal standards. I don't know, but the bottom line is I'm happy with the fire department as it is. Uh, I've been asking uh, on the budget committee now for six years, uh, do you need more staff? The answer's been some variation of no every year, except this year. And we're led to believe that it's just coincidental there's a grant available. I voted no on this because I didn't see the need. Now, there are those who think we can improve our fire, fire department with, with more personnel. And maybe you think you need a, a higher level of service. Then vote yes. I don't think I need a higher level of service. I don't think the town needs a higher level of service, so I'm voting no, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Edgar. Uh, Mike Edgar, Seven Ants Terrace. I'm in favor of this amendment. Uh, I know how highly trained our firemen are. It's actually pretty amazing. Uh, it's also when you go over to the uh, over to the fire station and the bell rings when you happen to be there and then you see the things that are, the adjustments that they make on the fly. 
it's like a, a well, quite, quite a well-oiled well team. Uh, everybody knows uh, all of the shifts that are going to take place in order to let's say man, man the ambulance and who's man in the uh, fire truck changes. They call people in. It's uh, it's actually a pretty amazing thing to see. But we know what we're getting when we call 911. Uh, highly trained people that are really interested in doing their job well. And uh, you know. We start talking about going to some other ambulance service that might be available at that time, might not. Uh, we don't know what we're getting. Um, I really hope that uh, people support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgar. I'm going to call it right now and just say we've gone at this. Uh, good discussion, pro and con, for over half an hour. All those in favor of ending discussion on Article 17, uh, excuse me, 18 at this time, raise your voter cards, down cards, all those opposed. We will move on to our